Welcome to a video tutorial from Valencia Photography Workshops and me, Stephen Power. This one is about post-processing a black and white negative into a stunning positive image using Lightroom and Photoshop. There's a real resurgence in using film cameras at the moment and for photographers to do their own developing, whether it's black and white or colour film. Some photographers have come to this fresh and it's the first time that they've used film or done their own developing. And some photographers like me did this maybe 40 years ago and moved away on the advent of digital cameras. And I've gone back to using film and film cameras more recently and also started to think about how I can process and develop those films without having to go out and buy an enlargers and um, print my own prints necessarily. So I've been uh, digitizing my negatives and you can see that in other videos I've made. There's a link at the top now for that and I've been using Lightroom to post-process my black and white negative images. In this video I'll talk about how to convert this black and white negative into this positive image using Lightroom and using Photoshop in a very limited way. I photographed the negative with a Canon 5D3 using a light table and I did so by photographing on the emulsion side of the negative to make sure that I got the most detail. You can see um, that it's actually laterally reversed. You can tell that by the numbers being back to front here. So in the develop module, the first thing I need to do is flip it back. So I'll go into the photo menu, flip horizontal. And then the next thing I want to do is to make sure that it's completely straight and flat. So I do that by coming down to the lens correction panel first of all. This is just a belt and braces thing. I check remove chromatic aberration, although there isn't going to be any really because it's a black and white image. And then enable profile corrections and that shows me which lens I've used and corrects any um, barrel distortion or anything like that in the image. And then I come down to the transform panel, click the level button and the, you might have seen very slight movement then when it's straightened. Now, the next part of the process is to crop the image. So I'm going to click the uh, crop overlay. I'm just going to pull down from the top until the lines just come inside the negative. Move it so that the top and bottom are equal, equally cropped. I'll press enter. And now the next thing I need to do is convert the negative to a positive. And I do that by using the tone curve and it's selected for the point curve. And I, you'll see there's a straight line running across the graph and I go to the bottom left hand corner, drag that up to the top left hand corner and then take the top right hand point and drag that down to the bottom uh, right hand point and you'll see now the image is converted uh, to a positive. It's also um, a slightly warm colour. This is because probably of the light panel that I'm using to um, photograph the image. So I'm going to take the vibrance off and that will bring it back to um, a more neutral looking monochrome image. But what you can see if we look at the histogram is that it's very overexposed. The negative itself doesn't look overexposed to me, certainly not by very much. So I think this is a product, if you like, of photographing the negative rather than scanning it. So it's something that I have to live with and I need to correct this now. I can do it by dragging this histogram here, but I find it more useful, easier actually, to do so in Photoshop. So if I hold Control and then click E, it will bring the image into Photoshop. There's the image in Photoshop. I'm going to hold Control and click L and that brings up the levels window. Um, I'm going to move this triangle on the right hand side of the histogram to where the curve starts. 
you can see already that's reduced the exposure. Click OK and then Control and W. Save changes to the Adobe Photoshop document before closing. Yes, that's closed the image and brought it back to Lightroom. So there's a TIFF version of the positive image now. I can see that there's still a, a black line, a flat line, excuse me, on the black side of the histogram. And I'm just going to pull that to the left a little bit, just try and increase the black tones a little bit more. Then the next thing I want to do is come down to the point curve and use the drop down. We've got linear, medium contrast and strong contrast and just see if that makes a difference. The next thing I'm looking at is this overexposed area in the scene here. I'm going to use the graduated filter. Drag up from outside the bottom edge of the image and the black dot in the line there will probably just take that just above where I want the image to be affected. Zero everything out, reduce the highlights. I can see already that's made a difference. I'm just going to go back slightly so it's not quite as flat. While I'm here, I'm going to see if moving the clarity slider has any effect. And it does, it, it's bringing out the shape of the stones a little bit more there. So I'm going to leave that. And sometimes I find with the black and white images, dehaze, which is really meant for blue skies, make them deeper. I find that gives a nice sort of contrasty effect, mid-contrast effect. So I have increased that slightly as well. So I've got 30 on the dehaze. I'm going to bring the clarity back to 50. Um, the next thing I'll try is this slightly brighter area here on the wall. And I'll do that by using the adjustment brush tool. Use the square brackets, which are on the top line of the keyboard usually. Get that to a workable size. Zero everything out and bring the highlights down and paint over. So we're just getting a bit more tone in the wall there. Okay, now I want to, I think this area is a little bit bright. So I'm going to use the graduated filter again, but this time from the side. Another top tip for the graduated filter is if you hold down the shift key, it keeps the lines straight as you drag. So I'm just dragging it with the highlights down, um, lift the clarity, adds a bit more punch. And I'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. Highlights at the same setting as the other side, and that's brought out the tones a little bit more. I still think this area at the front is a little bit bright, so I'm just going to go up again from the bottom and just bring the highlights down. It's okay, but it's sort of still looking a bit flat. I'm going to bring the clarity slider up a little bit um, to plus 25. The dehaze up, not too much, maybe 15. And maybe s slightly increase the shadows so that the image is not too flat looking. In the later versions of Lightroom, um, you have this texture slider, which I find very useful. Not only does it seem to bring out some of the literally the texture, um, it seems to add a little bit of mid-tone contrast as well. My sort of default for this would be about 40. And I think we're nearly there. One thing to look at though is this, the side of the column here is a little bit heavy in terms of the shadow. So I'll go into the adjustment brush, try around 35 for that and see some shadow detail appearing. Now, two more things to do. I'll zoom in to 100% and we can look at the sharpening. Come down to the detail panel. My default sharpening would be around 60, but for this black and white film, and because I've digitized it rather than scanned it, it can take a little bit more. So I'll give this 70. That looks about right. Um, now you can see that the grain or the the noise maybe is a little bit high, but it, this is HP5 film and it is grainy, so we don't want to mix up the two things. So, But I am going to soften it slightly using the luminance slider. Not too much though, because black and white film of this speed should have grain and it's not the same as noise. While we're here though, what we can see is that working with negatives often uh, produces spots. 
So I've gone into the spot removal brush and taken out the spots. If you hold the space bar down, the cursor becomes a hand and you can left click and drag around the image. Come out of the spot removal tool. I'll work on that later. If we go over to the histogram again, and we can see a gap still on the right hand side, meaning it's probably lacking in white tone. Well, I don't want to pull it all the way because I'm convinced it'll go overexposed. Okay, look, it's not perfect, but it was a very tricky image, a lot of gray tones, some burnt out highlights on the stones. If we have a look where we started. Um, so that's the image from when we converted it. It's looking pretty good overall. So hope that was helpful for you. Um, processing a black and white negative in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Please subscribe to the channel for more of the same and I look forward to seeing you again in Valencia Photography Workshops.